Thank you, Jane, and, and thanks to everybody who's made this the 10th year of an amazing uh, event, an increasingly more amazing event. Um, I, I want to read two brief things. Um, one of them, uh, the first of them is a, uh, a piece I did on fresh air uh, at uh, the end of 2008 when people were looking for the word of the year. Uh, and uh, some people uh, liked hypermiling, um, some liked uh, uh, bailout. Um, uh, uh, Bill Sapphire wanted to go with frugalista. But I suggested that if, if it were up to me, I'd fasten on the brief resurgence of Joe, a name that encapsulates the whole history of 20th century populism. <coughs> In 1942, FDR's Vice President Henry Wallace made a famous speech in which he declared that we were living in the century of the common man. For most of that century, the common man went by the name of Joe. The generic Joe Bloggs first showed up in the 1920s, along with his alias, aliases uh, Joe Zilch and Joe Blow, uh, to be joined later by Joe Schmo from Kokomo. And by the 1930s, Joe had replaced John and Jack as the generic word for a chap or a fellow, as in a good Joe or a regular Joe. <clears throat> uh, G.I. Joe made his first appearance in 1942 as a comic strip character in the Army Weekly Yank. He quickly took the place of Johnny Doughboy, who was a holdover from World War I. Since that period, Joe has always been the name that people reached for when they wanted to suggest blue-collar unpretentiousness. You think of Joe Palooka, the affable heavyweight champ from a popular comic strip that dated from the 1930s, or Jackie Gleason's garrulous Joe the Bartender, or Josephine the Pulp Plumber, who was featured in long-running ads for Comet Cleanser in the 1960s. Joe Camel slouched onto the scene a couple of decades later, shooting pool with his baseball cap on backwards, or sitting on his motorcycle in a black leather jacket, always with a cigarette dangling from his split lip. Man or dromedary, you couldn't imagine him as a Jeremy. <coughs> Joes don't stand on ceremony, which is why the truncation is compulsion, uh, compulsory for any politician called Joseph, particularly if he can claim modest origins. Hey, can I call you Joe? Actually, that's sort of the idea. Joe Lunchpail appeared in the 1960s, and Bill Sapphire has traced Joe's six-pack back to a 1970 Boston congressional race. At the time, some people heard the phrase as a slur on Irish voters, but it caught on as a slightly jocular handle for ordinary working class Americans. Homer Simpson embraced the label and expanded on it, calling himself Joe 12 Pack. Those are the voters both parties have been wooing since the late 1960s, but usually under oblique labels like the silent majority, working Americans, or the forgotten middle class. The working class and lower middle class have no entries in the American political lexicon. Pundits and politicos on both sides might chew, endlessly chew over the question, what does Joe Sixpack want? But the gentleman was only referred to in the third person. Before Sarah Palin, no national candidate had ever admired, addressed six, Joe Sixpack by name, much left offered him or herself as a representative of what Palin calls the normal Joe Sixpack American. And then in one of those you can't, just can't make this stuff up moments, the NGSA, National Joe Sixpack, Normal Joe Sixpack American Constituency, acquired a fresh, flesh and blood embodiment in the form of an Ohio man who happened to go by the middle name of Joe and who worked in the canonical 20th century blue collar job. That was pure serendipity. There's no way Wurzelbacher would have transformed himself into a campaign mascot if he'd been Dwayne the Drywall Guy. Between the mediagenic double-teaming of Joe the Plumber and Joe the Joe Sixpack identified vice presidential candidate, Republicans' populist pitch was more explicit and energetic than at any time since Nixon and Agnew ignited the culture wars 40 years ago. Their partisans were adrenalized, piling into Palin's rallies with placards bearing their first names and job descriptions. But outside of the Republican base, there was no rush to enroll in the Joe Sixpack nation. Of course, there are lots of reasons for that. Some had feared that Palin might incarnate Joe Sixpack a little too authentically, and Joe the Plumber turned out to be something of a loose spigot. <coughs> but whatever candidates happen to be carrying the Republican standard in 2012, it isn't likely they'll be bringing along any of this year's Joes when they make their way back to Ohio and Pennsylvania. That's the risk of populist rhetoric. What sounds plain folks in one ear will sound patronizing in another. Notwithstanding Henry Wallace's glorious speech or Aaron Copeland's even more glorious fanfare to the common man, the common man has never been crazy about being referred to as the common man. 
And with the notable exception of Homer Simpson, most people aren't comfortable having their sociopolitical identity reduced to a beverage preference, whether it's for beer or Chardonnay. Americans may still feel a nostalgic affection for the picturesque working class characters that the name Joe evoked in the last century. But when they catch a glimpse of themselves in the mirror, well, it's funny, but they don't look Jewish. <laughs> um, let, me, um, let me also read one very, or very briefly, one, a, a poem, as my uh, seventh grade English teacher used to call them. Um, this, uh, uh, I wrote, it, it, it's the last piece in this book, uh, The Years of Living Dangerously, and um, um, it actually appeared as a, a blog posting at Language Log, not, not on Fresh Air. Um, this uh, uh, was something I did at the time when, um, the spammers were all, you know, how they put little bits of prose or whatever into the spams to, to make them pass the filters, but they were all sticking in little bits from Hiawatha. Um, so I wrote this. In my inbox every morning, scads of spam solicitations, each to fool the filters, strewing in the header and the body random lines from Hiawatha. And Nokomis warned her often, Get your Claritol and cum pills. Oh, beware of Mudgekiewis. Make your wife or girlfriend speechless. Lie not down upon the meadow. Safe prescription medication. And Nokomis fell affrighted. Over half a million clients. Downward through the evening twilight. Free FedEx on every order. Till I have the sense of hearing the entire fucking cosmos droning, unenjammed, insistent in tetrameter trochaics, lulling me to drowsy numbness. Wahanonin, Wahanonin may already be a winner. Thank <laughs> you.